mic should be live. So welcome aboard, everybody. My name is Dubious. This is Fly In Formation. Uh, it's an interview series where I talk to different artists from across Canada and um, try to just learn more about the artists who kind of represent each individual scene. And a lot of these guys are people I've been playing on after the smoke is clear. That's my weekly mix show that I do with my homie DJ Dice. Uh, we play pretty much all independent Canadian hip hop. It's all new release stuff. Never play anything twice and uh, do an hour worth of like a mix show every week. Uh, so tap in over at mixcloud.com slash dubious and uh, you'll find the archives for the first four seasons or all of them except season one anyways, they're over there. I uh, didn't want to put season one up because the training wheels were still on. But uh, ever since then, we've been going full steam and uh, weekly episodes. I don't think there's another show that plays as much Canadian music as well, as much Canadian hip hop specifically as uh, as Dice and I do on After the Smoke is Clear every week. So definitely tap in over there uh, today. I'm joined by Young Prince Beats, who is another Lethbridge local here. Um, and we didn't get a chance to slap hands, but I saw you at a show, a, I don't know, a month ago or so, probably a couple months ago now it was. But uh, welcome yeah. aboard, man. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good, man. How are you? Uh, dude, I'm good. I'm, uh, you know, loving that finally we're getting some nice weather and, uh, yeah. you know everything's everything's lovely happy uh happy juneteenth to you uh, i'm watching yeah, the kendrick lamar <laughs> yeah i'm watching the kendrick lamar juneteenth uh concert beside me right now but um gotta mute it out so that we can we can talk man but yeah man. yeah dude so uh you've been putting out quite a bit of music lately uh i know you've been working a lot with like casper marcus and um uh i'm blanking on the other dude's name um do you got projects coming up or uh well right now we well i've been since i came out here i kind of took a break for a couple of years i moved to ottawa and uh just wanted to like build my beat catalog up a little bit more because i was just jumping on everything that i was making and then it was like all right let me <laughs> fucking actually have something that i can sit on for a sec and then come up with ideas so i, I waited and waited and then I finally, I moved out here and I built my studio and then it's time to finally get on projects. I even thought about stopping for a sec, but then, uh, <laughs> the spark I started working with, yeah, I started working with some of the artists out here and they kind of brought that spark back and, uh, yeah, it's been, it's been going, I have, uh, I don't know when, but me and Ollie, Ollie X, yeah. we've been doing a lot together recently and, uh, it's honestly i'm super excited for this like new music that's gonna come out because it's just like it feels like the early 2000s you know and that's like i try not to listen to new music now because i'm just so it, it's distracting because then you just want to just go make something easy because you're hearing these easy beats right like i'm a big big kanye fan and that's like my like producer goat you know what i mean between him and timbaland so it's like i i try to listen to more like samples and stuff like that so like the the selection that i was building and having now as soon as me and ollie clicked and he heard some of the stuff it was like things were just coming out like we weren't even we do, we have so many songs right now that are just in our heads that we're just like literally just like the beat we're playing we'll just start singing them we don't even record it but we know that okay that's the next project so like project wise i'm kind of focusing on that with ollie i've got a couple other people out here that that we're going to start working and pushing stuff out but yeah that's really it right now beautiful man yeah so um i've met dolly x uh before he seems like a dope dude i've never really heard too much of his music but uh interested too man but you just kind of threw me a curveball i thought i was talking to like a trap producer you you're oh. more more old school than the trap wave Man, I make trap beats. That's just the easy shit you were mentioning. <laughs> that's the easy shit, exactly. Okay. But I, like, I love to sample. Sampling is, like, my thing. I'm not really good at, like, these boom bap drums because I am still, like, I do like that fast pace or, like, slow pace. Mostly R&B stuff for me because okay. that's just who I am. Like, I was singing my whole life, right? But, yeah, trap's easy. 
<laughs> Fair I don't want to say it like that, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, if that's the way it is, man, that's the only yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, how about like on the, because I mean, I saw you rapping. You were up on stage with a microphone, you know, a yeah. while back. Usually it's, usually it's auto-tune, but I need to get my, I can, like, I bring my own shit up there. Okay. So I need to figure it out. So that night it was none of that. I was just, and plus it was like a lot of old stuff because it was my first time performing out here. So I wanted to kind of do stuff I was comfortable with. Yeah. I had a song that, that I was supposed to perform that I literally recorded right before, like, I got to the show, and I, then I was just like, nah, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a lot of pressure for something that you just recorded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, uh, yeah, it, it was enough. Like, I just wrote that verse that I, I rapped on that 16 bar challenge. Yeah. I just wrote that shit this afternoon on stream because yeah. I was sitting around <laughs> bored or whatever, but I don't think I'd want to jump on stage and, and try to rhyme it off the top of my head right now. I'd end up freestyling no. for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I mean... Can you talk a little bit about, I've wondered about guys who do a lot of auto-tune stuff. Um, what does the setup to do that live actually look like? Like, do you need to bring? So what I do is I just bring, I have different interfaces just from like working with my, like having my own studio over the years. And then, so I'll have like an extra one that's just like kind of there that I'll bring with me with just a laptop and I'll have the laptop to the interface, obviously running into the system. And then I have my own mic, okay. but the, com the, the computer would be close enough to me or I would have my DJ doing it. Usually when I was in London, right. he would just change my key. He knew what songs were next. Right. He would just change my key for me and I could just go and do it. Right. Okay. So if or you didn't have, hire, DJ, like, you'd have to walk over to the, the laptop and change and do it myself. Key between that's tracks how it, or whatever. Yeah. Okay. That's how it started. And then eventually we just like started just hiring studio engineers that could just unplug like that and bring their auto tune because they already knew how to set up to like london music hall say like when we were performing there well, i can't go and bring my own laptop there so we would hire like uh there was this guy greg hatchet who would he engineered uh stoner simpson for me okay he, he would come and do that shit for us so nice man um yeah i mean that doesn't sound like the type of setup that is really convenient if you're just going to do you know a three song set or whatever little little set or whatever sounds a little bit too involved to for that you know most of the time yeah, yeah, some yeah. other dj's got his laptop plugged in already or whatever yeah and... yeah i just had I, I was i was lucky that it was like the, the house dj for me like when i was part of um from nothing okay i think when i when I, we talked before and i showed you the the music with reezy yeah uh yeah, I yeah used that's to be, the other like, dude that I, I couldn't think of his name yeah. yeah 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 i used to be part of his his crew so he had the house dj and then me as the engineer and him as an artist too right manager owner whatever you want to call him yeah and then uh so it was kind of just like yo you have to do it for me not that he would have to do it the dj but like we're family you know what i mean like this is our we're putting this on for us like right yeah, makes sense, man. Um, so, dude, I wanted to ask about, like, uh, you know, uh, lately there's been this kind of wave of, like, one MC, one DJ pairing up, doing an entire project together. You mentioned that you and Ollie X are kind of working on one of those right now from the sounds of things. Have you done, like, a full project like that with, with any of these artists, bef uh, you know, before you moved out here? Uh, no. Usually it's just me producing for myself. Okay. Honestly, I'll send beats to some people and some people like like when I was with Breezy, he usually would jump on a lot of them. I have I sent beats to Casper. I have uh Blanket right now. Dre Bars did a did a verse on one of my beats. Just like stuff like that. But yeah, usually I was keeping them for myself. Cause like I said, I was making something and being like, oh, this is it. And then doing a song right away before I could even like have four or five beats to just go through or to sell or right yeah just rapid fire single after single or whatever yeah uh, um so can we talk about the name man young prince beats like i i asked you specifically like are, am i supposed to be putting the beats on there or do you want to just be yeah. young prince or whatever and so you said leave the beats on time. so yeah. yeah it's been a long time since i've been young prince beats and because I, I started rapping in high school. So I was like 14, 15, right? And I was originally just going by Young Prince and Young Prince because my my government name is Royce. 
okay. which in, in French, it translates or, or whatever to son of the king is like the origin of it. I don't know. I Googled it. Okay. Yeah. And then, um, sounds like Royal. So I, I mean, I, I can see how it well, has the same well, roots right. or whatever. My, you know? Yeah. My dad's name is Roy, okay. which is king. So it all makes sense if you, if you put it together. So yeah. but everybody calls my dad Royce. So I was young Royce, little Royce, everybody called me. So young Prince. Yeah. And then, yeah, young Prince beats. And once I started making beats, it was just like, that's it. Okay. So when you're releasing music as, as just you, you make the beat, you're singing on it. It's young Prince beats. Young Prince beats still. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 I've thought about changing it to like, maybe just Prince beats, but then I'm like, what's the point? Like, you know what I mean? Actually, that was something I wanted to ask. Cause I know a lot of the time mm -hmm. in like, you know, in the culture, there's like the guys with Lil or young or whatever in front of their yeah. name. It's because we'll there's the big homie it. and they they, yeah. they they take the same name or whatever. Um, yeah. So you just kind of mentioned like y your dad is basically the big the homie. Big homie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 100%. yeah. Yeah. 100%. Okay, that makes sense, man. Um, because yeah, I, w I was gonna say like, is there ever gonna be a point where you got to drop the young? Like, uh, uh, at what point does a rapper no longer? Well, I just but, turned thirty. I'll be thirty-one in November. When I turned thirty was when I was like, the young needs to go. But <laughs> yeah, keep it. Man. I was also thinking that I needed to go at the same time. So, you know, Word. Uh, I'm, I'm glad you, uh, you know, found the inspiration to to get back to it. Was it mostly just just kind of getting into a new music scene, having new people around you? Yeah, you? like I wasn't really in the music scene. I knew a couple people in Ottawa, met a couple like I met uh, these two guys. I know them. They're the, the chemists. I think they go by together as a group. Okay. And uh, Bobby Brugal, I don't know if you know him. Doesn't ring uh, a bell, but I'll look him up. That's the I love asking yeah. people for like who's who on the scenes that they're from or whatever. So, oh, so, I, yeah. I just met them like like through Casper. I met Bobby, and then um, my my buddies came down to Ottawa to do a podcast, and they interviewed the chemists. And I just met them one night, and they're they're pretty talented too. But right. me and Bobby. We, we hung out a little bit more and I showed him some beats and everything. We didn't really get the chance to drop anything or like record anything, but that's just where I was when I was there. But yeah, when I came out here, the first thing I did was like, all right, like I'm, I'm going to be here for a while. I, I bought a house. Like, you know what I mean? Like and I'm, I need to introduce myself to some people. So I just reached out on Instagram, honestly, to like Ollie and a couple other people, Javier. Yeah. And yeah, the Lethbridge they, scene is pretty small still, you know? Yeah, yeah. So it wasn't even like I was like reaching out to like crazy, like, oh, I'm never going to get a response. They were like, like, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do make music out here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Ollie, Ollie invited me to a music video shoot. And then that, that was like our first time meeting. And then I met a couple other people, Oma Oba. He, uh, he came and he recorded here. And then all he ended up coming to like just listen to some beats one time and it was like fucking we were just like yeah like you know like the scene in fucking Step Brothers or whatever when they're like we just become best friends yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah quick to bro down man art yeah, does that, man. Right? yeah yeah we were just like yo like let's make music and even he was saying the same thing like yo I was like I, I wasn't feeling it you know what I mean and I was like trust me man I've been there like. Damn. Yeah. Uh, you know, me, myself, when I moved down here, I thought I was done with rapping and then I ended up working at Arches and I kind of, I don't know, casually mentioned to somebody that like, you know, I, I had rapped in the past that I have albums out and shit. And, uh, mm -hmm. from there on, like, you know, all, all the people coming through Arches just wanted to freestyle with me all the time and stuff. So, uh, it actually turned into like, I was running a music program out of the supervised consumption site and, like it was just this position that I never even dreamed was possible or whatever was, would be a thing, could be a thing. Uh, and it just ended up being like so inspiring, just like being around people making music all the time, like five days oh, a week 100%. we were recording music. Right. So, um, 100%. yeah, man, it just it relit the spark. But when I moved down here, I was totally in the boat that I was just like, nah, I'm, I'm done with this. I'm, I'm old, I'm fucking washed up and I'm, I'm <laughs> finished at this point, you know? Um, well, I always told myself like, yo, I don't want to be that 30 year old guy that's trying to still make music. But then when I got to 30, I'm like, what kind of fucking mentality was I on? Like, you know what I mean? That's just like stu stupidity. Like I was always like, oh, I can just make beats type of thing, right? Yeah. But nah, I, I love it. I, I live, I breathe music. Why would yeah. I ever fucking, even if, 
it's just for myself. Like, why would I ever stop? That's it. Yeah, man. I like that mentality. I, I say that shit all the time. They're like, even yeah. if I end up just kind of, you know, if nobody listens to it, like, so be it. But yeah, I'm going to put it out there because it's, it's fucking cheap at this point. If you've already got the setup, you know, if you've already got Ableton and a mic and a preamp or whatever, like, <laughs> uh it's it's pretty cheap to be able to put songs onto spotify it's like 15 bucks a track or whatever and yeah. it's not breaking anybody's bank so like why not really you know um, yeah 100 yeah dude um i guess something i do ask a lot of different people man is like what would success look like for you like at this point in in your music career uh you know we both just kind of mentioned that we're the goal is not, you know, to yeah to like blow know. up and get famous or whatever necessarily. Honestly, man, I feel like, and I don't like this is is weird to say, but I I feel like I don't even care about that anymore because the things that I've done and in, in just what I'm doing, like I'm happy with that. Like, yeah, I'm open for certain names. I've 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 got like certain big names that are big to me. Like, I have a song with the Macaulay Boys. Who was like hometown heroes to us like london you know what i mean like yep. it's just wild like so like yeah like i met and, and have sean kingston on one of my beats like yeah yeah, yeah i don't yeah. care if i get fucking signed by fucking hollywood because i like, who the fuck really cares about that like i mean like all sorts of money would be nice you know i would be less i'll stressful. take the money yeah. i'll take the money but i have fucked the fame you know what i mean i hear like, that man yeah definitely. i don't need to be fucking hounded and this and that and that and there's been all of a sudden there there's expectations for me at a point right Fuck yeah. expectations Hell yeah, man. For me, it's more about like just trying to work with different people, even just getting to know different people, man. This whole interview series has been super dope and like 100%. just being able to reach out and like chop it up, shoot the shit with fucking different guys across the country, uh, you know, and just kind of learn things as I go or whatever. And, and ideally it's kind of like, you know, we're documenting the culture We're we're, laying a, a path that, mm -hmm. that shows the history that all these people have been out here doing the thing and they get to tell their story or whatever. So there you go. yeah, man. Um, this one, I mean, you kind of already touched on it, but like, can we talk about your influences? Like was Kanye kind of percent huge 100%. early on for you? Okay. I'll tell you what it was. I heard I don't even know how old I was, but this is a true story. I swear to God on everything I love. I'm, I was listening to Through the Wire, and my mom was like, what the fuck are you doing listening to Shaka Khan? She already knew, like, I loved music. Like, I right. loved old music, too, but she was just, like, shocked that it was, like, Shaka Khan. <laughs> and I'm like, no, this is fucking Kanye West, mom. What are you talking about? And she's like, no, this is Shaka Khan. And she showed me Through the Fucking Fire, right. and I swear to God, from that day, I fell in love with like sampling even just like i would take records and fucking speed it up so it would like sound like the chipmunks you know what i mean i i loved it i loved it yeah and then um honest to god when i fell in love with autotune this is funny too i'm on a boat fucking the lonely island song with t-pain okay yeah I heard T Pain's fucking harmonies and his voice, and I love harmonies. Like that's my favorite thing to listen to. I can listen to acapella harmonies all day, acapella groups, like and shit like that all day. Right. But I heard his harmonies, and I'm on a boat, and I was like, "Yo, like I want that. I want to just eat, just like for fun. You know what I mean?" So I got a laptop, and my buddy got me a fucking pirated version of FL Studio. Shout out to him too because. I, I started making beats after this. Like, that's what he showed me how to, how to make beats. And then um, I put the headphones into the fucking microphone and another pair of headphones so I could listen to it. And I'm singing into my hand. Into the headphones, with, yeah. With auto-tune, you know what I mean? Like, I got a pirated auto-tune, too. And I was like, yo, this is what I want to do. And then my dad was like, oh, oh, whatever, whatever. And he just got me, like, a little couple, like, things to, like, just like a microphone and like a interface, like a real mixing board and everything like that. Is and your dad yeah. a musician or? No, he just, my family loved, my mom is like the fucking karaoke queen. Like nice. you fucking can't, can't top her. You know what I mean? So music's always been in my blood. Like I was singing karaoke at five 
I, I performed in front of my school for the first time in like grade three. I said, I believe I could fly. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I've always been music. So he knew. So when I was like, yeah, I just want to make music, you know, he was always like, make sure you have another plan. But like, I'm not going to fucking shit on your dreams. So he got me a couple, couple little things. Dope. And then, yeah. And then my, my like main influence, that's like, well, my three influences will say is Wiz, obviously, 100%, Kanye, 100%, and T-Pain, 100%. Okay. But then, like, my cousin that I used to make music with, Hush Pop, that's my dog. Like, that's my best friend, you know what I mean? And we he came to my house when I was 15, and I had all the equipment in the basement, and I'm fucking rapping on, like, other industry beats, like, fucking Gucci and shit like that. He was like, yo... You make your own beats. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Wrap it on these. Like, <laughs> fucking showcase yourself. You know what I mean? And we made a song on my one of my beats for the first time that day. Nice. And it was like, what was the right. disconnect? Why weren't you rapping on your own stuff? Was I don't it just, know. You didn't I think was it just, was up to par, or like, yeah, I didn't yeah. think it was good. And then they, like, I had to have like someone to be like, no, this one was it. And like, the first song we ever recorded on one of my beats was called "Moving On," and then, like, I still have it. It's fucking hilariously fucking recorded like trash like I'm everybody's deep. first recording would be yeah, you know what i mean but it it was like it was still like a good song and then i was like okay and then like we started doing other stuff i met watts he's another london local and uh we we made a song called shoddy don't know me and then that was like okay these are the people that i want to make music with like so like my influence is really my 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 main group of people, Straight Hustle Records, like that was us. Nice. Sunny Black, Watts, and Hush Pop, you know what I mean? Shouts to the crew. Um, yeah. It's funny that you you said that like uh, that Lonely Island on a Boat song is where you really I'm, like fell in love with. Man, with t it, it was the, it was the auto-tune, man. I don't know how to explain it. Cause like, dude, like I, I a joke. I'm a this hater of like Joe crap like that. Like I really just oh, feel like they're mocking I, the culture and just I like, wanted to be a comedian. I wanted to be Dave Chappelle when I was a kid. Okay. Like, you know what I mean? Like high school, I'm getting kicked out every fucking day because I just want to be funny. Cutting jokes in class or whatever. Yeah. So then when there's funny and music, you know what I mean? I was like, this is it for me. I can fucking get it. But then music just took over. The funny was like, whatever. But yeah, so it wasn't even just that. It was like, I actually liked what they were doing. Well, because at that time, T-Pain must have had hits on the right. Like, right. They didn't. Yeah. He they had like discover T-Pain. Like, like, like he fucking yeah. buy you a drink. And, but that was like different. Like, you're like, OK, he's good. But I heard the harmonies and I was like. Yeah. fuck is this guy what the, like what the fuck this guy said poseidon and he sang poseidon and i was like <laughs> it was such a joke but it sounded so fucking good you know what i mean and then from that day yeah like i was literally the first time i ever sang in the autotune i sang i'm on a boat because i just wanted to recreate right that sound man yeah, man, I think a lot of artists actually start that way by kind of either rapping their favorite artist bars or, yeah, you know, yeah. singing, singing their favorite artist songs or whatever. Yeah, 100 percent. The first song that I ever recorded ever, I did a remix of Run This Town, Kanye, Jay-Z yeah. and Rihanna, where yeah. I sang the hook. No, I think I had a verse. I don't remember, but it was with my my homies FNS and T. Hart, Tyler Harker. And yeah, that was the very, very first song I ever recorded was Run This Down. And then we started doing like Drake and shit. Yeah. Yeah, that one's a classic, dude. Uh, big, big song, Run This Down. Yeah. Um, let's see. So do you have like a Beats store? Like, are you on Beat Stars? Or like, just, are you... I'm on Beat Stars and I'm on YouTube. I got to really be up to date. Like I'll, I'll post what I do post. I'll try to post a bunch at a time, but then like right now I'm pretty sure on YouTube, everything's sold. Okay. So like I got to go and take, start taking those down. Well, I'll leave them up, just leave a mark that's sold and they're tagged. Right. So it doesn't really matter, but I mean, hopefully it doesn't really matter. I, I've recently been told by a guy, oh, no, I just took a bunch of beats off of YouTube to make my album, which is now on Spotify. I'm not going to name the guy and throw him hey, under the man. bus, but I'm not going to name names either, but that that shit happens so yeah it, here i was here and somebody came here they did a whole fucking album <laughs> on stolen beats they paid me to record them right then everything was just a headache after that 
a headache. They want every mix session. I'm trying to get them to fucking take shit out. I'm trying to get just feedback. You know what I mean? And I can't get the right feedback to mix their music that, that they're paying for. And then after all of it's said and done, the man said, can you take those tags out? From the beat? <laughs> like, no. <laughs> Yo, what makes you think I'm going to rob the next producers? Yeah, right. My people. This is my community. I've had beats stolen from me. I would never fucking help. That's Somebody the thing, man. Steal beats. Yeah, yeah. As an artist, you, it's like, why would you do that? Like, do you just feel like fuck those other artists? Is that really the approach? Or like, and then, yeah. and then, like, when I'm sending them the uh, the songs, I'm posting them on SoundCloud to like like hidden so that they can listen to them to send me. Okay, at this time mark, at this time mark, this is what I want. All right, right. The songs are coming up copyrighted because of the beats are the beats are sold. Yeah. So it's not even like they're stealing someone's beat. They're they're literally already songs. Yeah. Like I, I, so many guys trying to get in, like being rappers, being MCs, they don't understand that whole behind the scenes thing. And I think a lot of people's first, you know, album or whatever often is going to get copyright struck down, taken off. You know, listen, I've sampled and have samples up that I'm. Um, are on Apple Music and stuff like that. If they fucking take them down, they take them down. But I'm not stealing people's beats that yeah. they work their fucking that hard to fucking produce, right? For real, man. Yeah, sampling is a different thing, I think. Like, uh, hip-hop is so built on sampling that I feel like a lot of people are putting out a lot yeah. of music where the samples aren't cleared. And yeah. it's kind of like... <clears throat> At, at, at least the mentality I've always heard and kind of sided with is like, if you start making money, if one of your songs blows up and you're, you know, touring off of it and doing shows and it's making you streaming revenue or whatever, make sure you keep some of that money yeah, and, and, and go pay that sample as soon as you can, yeah. you know, because <laughs> it's only a matter of time till they come knocking. If you get big, they'll come knocking. But, um, I don't know. I mean, Universal Music Group, they're, especially now with AI, what it is, it's getting tougher and tougher for them to miss samples, I think. Like, uh, you know, they can probably run yeah. it through some fucking program that tells them exactly what's what. Um, yeah, it's just the, the fucking key and the frequency of the voice or some stupid shit like that, my word. Yeah, yeah. Unless unless people are being real tricky and spinning shit backwards or, you know, whatever else. Oh, I've done that. I've done that. I've just reversed the beat yeah. and it sounded fucking amazing. And I was like, whatever. I'm just going <laughs> to. It's mine now, this. motherfuckers. Yeah. <laughs> shit. Oh, man. So uh, on BeatStars, are you doing leases? Like, um, this is something I like talking with producers about, like leases versus kind of exclusive rights or whatever. Do you, do you care who jumps on your beats? Uh, no, I don't care. So like, lease them to 50 different guys, and if 40 of them suck, that's all good? Like, If they want to lease it, I don't know. I, I really don't like leases. I'd rather people just buy it because a lease is, is a headache for me, you know what I mean? Because oh, you, you have so many rules and restrictions, and I don't like to fucking do that. Like, yo, if you buy the beat, just fucking buy the beat. I'm not going to charge you an arm and a leg, you yeah. know what I mean? I'm not asking for thousands of dollars. But just get the pay up front and then it's done with. And well, yeah. ask me. Even just to just be like, yo, this is my budget and I really like this beat. I'm fucking, I'm, I'm going to work with you. I'm not a fucking asshole. Like, yeah. That's the part that a lot of MCs don't understand is they feel like, oh, that guy's established. He probably doesn't want to fucking work with just some rando who, you know, doesn't have music out, for instance, or whatever. Like, yeah. Um, but I, from what I've found, like, dude, artists are, for the most part, kind of friendly people who are looking to make dope art. So, like, if you approach them on that, you know, wavelength and, yeah. and say because that. Because you might even be the best. You might even be the next best thing. Yeah. Yeah. And or they, they might really like your sound and just be inspired by it. And, you know. Um, yeah. You yeah. think that you think that these these big artists weren't somebody and didn't have little producers look at Murder Beats. Yeah. And the Migos before they were anything, right? I don't know if they were working together, but I know where the beats through the Migos, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, man. Well, <laughs> and you never know what's gonna blow up or who's gonna blow up. So I think a lot of That's artists I mean. just kind of yeah. work with work with anybody. I work with, and, I work with anybody yeah. because especially if if 
if I think you're talented, if I think that you have what it takes, I'm going to fucking put up, I'll put my fucking foot into it. You know what I mean? Like, yo, yeah. let's work. Let's do this. I have these. Here's the pack. Let's yeah. get into it. Like, and that's how it is with Ollie. Like, I was like, yeah, let's fucking go. Here you go. Here's 12 beats. Tell me what you think of these. And he was like, six of them. Let's do this. And then he'd come in the studio and what he thought we were going to do completely changed because then I started giving ideas, right? Like, it stays in the same structure. Like, we just did a song the other day. I wish I could play it. It's fucking amazing, man. Like, yo, it's... I still need to write my verse, but it's dangerous. Nice. So just you're, like, you're going to be rhyming on this stuff with Ollie then too, eh? 100%. Yeah, it's, it whatever, just, okay. yeah, it's not just... Yeah, it's not just... It's literally going to be like uh, a Ollie X Young Prince Beach joint collaboration project. Like, nice. Okay, so you're doing more than just the production on it. That's dope. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's it's crazy. Some other people have production too. I have some other beats. My my guy hit a beats from London too. He he sent me a pack, and there was a beat that I liked. I did the hook, and Ollie heard it. He's gonna do a verse. So nice. What's the hip hop scene in London like, man? I. Uh... Like back in the day when I used to do send outs for my albums and stuff, um, I actually got play in London on their university channel or whatever. I, I can't yeah. even remember like the names of the DJs. 106.9 was sick. They used to have uh, local artists could could give their songs. Me and Reezy were on there for a bit. Casper obviously was on there. And then Western had Western had Ollie on there for a bit. And then Western had a couple people. I know that was shit back in the day. Like Western had Ollie on there for a bit. Casper obviously was on there. I know it always changed, so I don't really want to shout out names or, or yeah. say the wrong name and stuff. But yeah, they had a radio station at Western that they would do a lot of local stuff too. People would come in and do freestyles on the air and stuff like that. Like it was, it was cool. Nice. I used to go there. I went there a couple of times with Casper. How about as far and, as like uh, like hip hop nights, like at at you know clubs or venues? Now or it's like... working. Uh, since I left, honestly, I'm gonna say shout out to fucking Jellyfish. Uh, I see him throwing like fucking hip hop nights and shit or, or whatever he was doing, have bringing a lot of artists together just to perform, just to, to hear each other. Like nice. we used to have hip hop nights when I was younger, where we would just go to the bar and everybody was there, like the Black Shy or Club Large and stuff like that. And we used to we used to have hip hop, hip hop ain't dead, it's alive nights where it was different people all the time. They were all London artists. Sometimes some people would come from Toronto and stuff, but it was it was good. Nice, man. And then, Would they do like ciphers as well at, at some of these nights? Like, yeah, they used to. Now they probably do it a lot. Like, we were ciphering out here one night, and I was like, yo, this is hard. I yeah. missed this shit. Like, it was that night when we were we were judging. I don't know. I don't know if we came out to that. It was like beside the casino. Uh, I, I judged at one of those, but I don't think it was. I had different judges on the panel with me, unless maybe you were on the second set of judges. Maybe you were. I was probably the second. Yeah. Yeah. yeah maybe you were. Okay. Yeah. I was yeah, out yeah. of that. Yeah. 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 We were freestyling outside that night during the intermission, actually, right after you. You were probably still upstairs. Right. Yeah. Word, man. No, I think actually I walked past the uh, the cipher. Um, my wife and I were off to to get some food in the break, but uh, yeah, man, I think I saw you guys uh, kicking it. Yeah. Um, dude, can I ask you, like, do you get more fulfillment making music in the studio or more fulfillment from actually being on stage performing it? I don't know. Performing it's a lot harder for me because of the whole auto-tune and singing. Right. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I do love to go out there and sing. But, like, I love... It's like, I used to, I always tell people like this because they'll be like, oh, you don't fucking need auto tune, fuck off. You know what I mean? Like my family and shit. And I'm like, listen, would Jimi Hendrix get on stage without his fucking guitar? Right. Like I, I, I fucking mastered this shit. Like I know what, I know how to get. Well, and you if, sound good, like. If that's the signature sound, I mean, that's yeah, what like, people who know your music stop? are gonna, you know, expect. Yeah. And like. So T Pain, for instance, can sing his ass off. You know, like fucking ass off. He's man. been he's been I putting out that. yeah he's been putting out uh, you know clips and stuff like tons of content. He's turned <laughs> into super content creator guy. But yeah. uh, you need to know how to so the, the way that he uses auto tune. You need to know how to sing. You yeah. need to know how to hit a note. You can't just reach for the note and expect the auto tune to take you there. It's fucking not gonna work for real. Yeah, you need melodyne or some shit, dude. And that's some shit actually that a lot of people don't understand either. Mm -hmm. Is like when you just jump in the booth, 
you know, and I've had, I've worked with people too that like want me to auto tune them. And it's like, yo, I can tell it what key we're supposed to be in, but like, you still got to try to hit it. the notes. Like you got, you got to, you got to get there, you know, like hundred percent. And then they're like, oh, that's too much auto tune. Same person, same, same fucking person that was giving me a hard time. Yeah. Yeah, well, and then they come over and, and look at the computer and tell you, oh, no, it's just <laughs> change these settings or whatever. And turn, it's down, like, turn down the auto-tune, they said. I turned down the auto-tune. It yeah. sounds like the auto-tune's off. Like, yeah, <laughs> but it, you're not. I mean, it needs to be cranked, dude, right, dog. It's yeah. not. It's, that's exactly the same problems that I've had. That's that's engineer problems with, with yeah, amateur man. singers. Yeah, that's why I love I love those engineers that make, like, the funny videos in the, in the studio, like, oh, yeah, shouts to Curb the Kid. Do you follow Curb the Kid? That guy's fucking no. hilarious, man. He's he's uh, I think he's based out in BC. Yeah, I'll send you the at, but yeah, he makes yeah. a bunch of those production videos about working yeah. with with artists. I love like it, that. man. They're, they're hilarious because because only only engineers and producers can relate. Like, yo, know, that shit's hilarious. Yeah, for real, man. Uh, they start critiquing your plugins or whatever. <laughs> yeah, everybody thinks they know what's fucking best, man, but uh i don't know I, I think there's so many different combinations of what can actually work that there is no real like best you know like uh, you can have like i had a guy tell me you know well here it says like this is the supply chain that like juice worlds or not the supply chain the plug-in chain the juice world is fucking using or whatever and it's like this is what me and this is what me and all we're talking about you know how many fucking hands touch that after yeah that's how juice world records maybe that's how he likes to hear his voice in the fucking thing. But you know how many hands are touching that after? That's not the same. Yeah. Yeah, for real, man. <laughs> Preach. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, dude, so do you run a lot of studio sessions? Like, do you do uh, a fair amount or have you over the years done a fair amount of, like, engineering for different mm -hmm. artists like that? Yeah, I've engineered. Right, like, for just for people out here, obviously, Ollie, uh, Oma Oba. Uh, and right now, I'm uh, I'm not going to be doing the mixing for him, but me and Jeremiah are going to be uh, recording. Nice. We did a we did a couple of songs before, but now he's uh, he's going to be coming in. Okay. Yeah. Nice, man. Um, and the mixing and mastering <laughs> that end, you haven't dabbled in just yet. I'm I'm not the best, is what I tell them when they come in here. Like, yo, if you want me to do the mixing, I don't charge fucking crazy prices. Yeah. But I'm not also not the fucking best. I'm used to doing my own shit for myself. So I I'm That's about where I'm at my too, own man. I voice. Just, yeah. I have I homies who are better at at doing the shit, so I just still outsource to them for the, the mixing yeah. master or whatever. But yeah. like mastering, no, but mixing I'll 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 do it if they ask. But yeah. don't give me a hard time with 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 if it's not fucking studio fucking par as they say industry quality what the fuck they want to say right yeah which not a, also kind of yeah, doesn't yeah. mean anything these days because like guys yeah. of you know uh, like X blew up on SoundCloud just like with whatever sound quality he was working with the, you know the like, roughest mix ever right like yeah. and then okay now you have money to fucking pay for that industry shit where you can have ten people touching it that's not for real. Um, how about promotional strategy, man? What, uh, like, I know you did what, the one, you know, 16 bar challenge there or whatever. That's, that's hot right now for producers who are trying to find yeah, more yeah. MCs and stuff. Are you planning on doing more of those or like, it's a yeah, pain in the ass on Instagram, bro. I was oh, trying to figure sucks, out how man. to stitch the fucking video together. Like if it was Listen, on TikTok, it, I, you just I hit the duet button and it fucking, yeah. it's easy, man. But Instagram I, was fucking me around today. So I just ended I think, up posting it. <laughs> I think that's what people do. I think they just go to TikTok now to record the videos. Right. And then they'll just post it on Instagram. Talk but yeah, I don't know. That's probably I, smart. Yeah. I'm just trying out these, these things to try to push my beats. You know what I mean? Usually the, the people that get my beats or buy my beats, they get them here live or like, yeah, it's normally people, people you've shook hands with that I work yeah. with. Exactly. So like online, sometimes people hit me up online and that's cool, but yeah, fair enough, man. Um, how about lately, man, you mentioned that you try not to listen to new music. I like to ask people what they've been listening to lately. I'm stuck in the past, man. Yeah. I'm listening stuck, to the classics so stuck in the past. Because I listen to so much samples, trying to always, I love 
old music, like not even like old hip hop, like so like, like outside. Okay, outside the genre. I'm, I'm, I'm everywhere. I'm like 60s, 70s, 80s, like whatever. You, yeah, you know what I mean. Like, and that's just what I listen to. So sometimes I'll hear new shit and be like, oh, that's sick. But right now, I'm trying not to listen to any new music because of the music that I'm making. Right. I'm so like happy with with the the sound and like like bringing it kind of back to that like fucking 2000s that it's like i don't want to get out of that and then start rapping some trap shit like obviously there's going to be some things like that on this project that i'm working on but right there's some crazy shit there's some crazy shit that's happening like we even have a song i have a beat right now that you know lucy lucy wa yeah so seen her she, perform at, well i saw her perform a couple the, times yeah, yeah. Now, yeah yeah she she had this video on um <clears throat> on tiktok of her just kind of riffing in the studio this song that she has and i was like can i sample this and then i got the clip and i just took the the vocals because now fl studio is amazing and you could fucking separate the fucking stems okay yep so i just took the the stems out and I made this fucking like, like Jersey fucking club beat, like do 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 with yeah. with her voice and like an electric guitar and shit. And it's nice. fucking. So were you using her vocals as like a sample then, or like yeah, you just yeah. remade something like, beneath her entire vocals? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She just her vocal, like the actual raw vocal, is the only thing that I used of her. Okay, but not so like chopped up too. in parts or whatever. You just left her entire yeah. vocal and made a beat yeah. underneath it. Okay, I got you. Yeah um how how classically trained in like music are you man do you do you play instruments can you read not, notes or I, any of that I shit play, i play a little bit of guitar just kind of self-taught okay i i know basic piano like i'm not good at all but everything that i do is by ear like i'll just hear okay this and this and this and this and everything will kind of go together by the end of it because obviously you you can hear the, the wrong note too so like yeah yeah, for real, man. Um, yeah, I know a lot of producers like that who can play keys well enough to play a melody in some hip hop or whatever, yeah. but they're not gonna fucking sit down and play a symphony for yeah. you. Yeah, I'm not sitting down at the at the airport piano like those videos. Yeah. I'm not doing that. Right. Um, uh, this is kind of just a general question that's that's fun to ask people who have like been around a lot of different artists, but. Is there one quality that comes to mind when you think of like what does it take to be a successful artist as far as people you know? Like what what do they have that other people don't? Um, there's I always tell myself quality over quantity. You know what I mean? Like if you want to be successful, you can't just force feed everybody every fucking thing that that you're gonna put out or right. everything that comes to mind because you're you're gonna annoy people one. Nobody's gonna and and you if you post if you post ten songs in a month or the fucking whatever yeah maybe four out of those ten songs are gonna be something that people would listen to you know what I mean unless you're fucking the the greatest artist in the world and everything you do is magic right but yeah people aren't gonna listen so yeah always always quality over quantity but you always gonna be like dedicated and on your toes yeah. make sure that, that you know what you're doing that you know how to promote yourself like everybody always would just drop music and no fucking money behind it nothing yeah you gotta you gotta fucking promote yourself you gotta if you're dropping one song push that fucking song push it push it push it even if you're making a post and deleting it in a couple of weeks and fucking posting the same shit it's always that song because there's ways to make money just behind that, if you just fucking copyright your music or whatever, right? I mean, give or, me some uh, advice here, homie. I dropped an EP <clears throat> two weeks ago. It's Bandcamp exclusive right now. Um, and, and you know, like, I'm looking at it like, okay, well, I put up fucking clips from interviews I'm doing with people yeah. all the time, you know. And, th there's and always, always new stuff on it. my yeah, post. Yeah, just going to talk about it. Yeah. So every time you're, dro you're, you're, you're dropping it, like, you got to make sure that it's just like... I don't know how to explain it. Like you got to make sure that you're just pushing it the right way. Don't don't push it to the point where it's like you're you're driving everybody crazy with this. Where they're just like, you know, when you see an ad on Instagram and they're just like, oh, it's just an ad, and you yeah. skip it. Yeah. Don't make it like that in their head. Like it has to be like 
Something yeah, I'm not gonna cheap. lie, man. A lot of the IG sponsored stuff, I look at it and I'm just like, what is no, this like, cheesy this. shit? Like, yeah, this guy's trying like, too oh, hard sh- or whatever. Look at that, man. like, yo, yeah. what the fuck is that? Like, nah, yeah, like make it catchy. So, like, if it's like, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta find your catchiest song, catchiest part of your catchiest song, right? And post that, post that all the time. <laughs> that part, you know what I mean? Different videos, make little funny things with it or whatever, like. I always try to do stuff like that. Yeah, man. Or like, get get different op- opinions from people too. For like that, oh, what should I do with this? Like, like, oh, should I? And and music videos. You know what catches my eye the most? A sick music video because. Here, I'm, I'm here, let, me, let me set let me set this one up. I do a segment and we'll get to it in a little bit here, but I do a segment yeah. where it's how important is this or that. So how important yeah. is a music video in 2020? A music video is 100 percent important because fucking the internet is is the is the world. Yeah. The internet is the fucking world. And everybody loves movies and TV shows. And if you're incorporating that with your music, even if it's like somebody I went to my sister lives in Spain and <clears throat> I met this guy, Miguelo, that makes music too. And I don't understand anything that he's saying, but he sent me a music video and it was a music video movie. It was half an hour Dope. on YouTube yeah. of him just walking, rapping, and then it'll go to a different setting and he's walking and he's rapping, he's sitting down, he's rapping. And it's just like, it was literally like I was there with him in, in Spain. Does he go through his entire album? His entire album in one one video. Yeah. And it's like the sun rise to the sunset. Like it's like cool. So like the I think Homie music Touch videos. up in Edmonton did that for <laughs> for an entire album. Has music videos for every track on it. Um and, yeah. I mean, like that's that's just such a big undertaking, man. Like there's so much work goes into it. Especially if you're talking about like like a full length music video. Do you do you think that the era of full length music videos has come and gone? Because I feel like at this point social media Let's us take one song and make, you know, five different music videos that are all 30 seconds long from that one, mm-hmm. you know, from that one song, as opposed yeah. to like necessarily mm-hmm. even needing the full three minute long music video. Well, a lot of people don't have that, like, that attention span anymore where we can drop four minute and 30 second songs. Everything has to be three minutes or yeah. three, three minutes, like, don't do a seconds. third verse, whatever you do. Yeah, you pretty know. much, you can't even do a bridge anymore. Like, yeah. you have to fucking cut <laughs> eight bars to a bridge to a fucking hook, For right? Real. But if your song is that good, or your storytelling is that good in your video, people are going to watch. What they need to bring back is skits in music videos. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, where it starts with something, it gets into the song, it goes, there's a break, something's happening, just to keep... You're, you're you're telling a story like like shit like um they just did it actually something just did it drake did it with chris brown okay where they got the, the dance off in the middle of the fucking whatever you know what i mean like just shit like that and so then like, the video starts oh yeah it's refreshing it. it's refreshing and then you're back into the music oh yeah this is the music video but yeah. that was funny you know what i mean yeah there's this dude now, uh from someplace out in ontario i think like markham or someplace connor price he, he has a bunch of little short form videos where uh you know like he'll start with like spinning a globe and fucking choosing the place on it and then it breaks into the music oh, video yeah, yeah, yeah. that he made like with the dude from wherever he found on the globe or whatever like yeah, that's just, sick. Th- yeah little setups like that or whatever um and i think that's slick man that's that's a, a smart way to kind of grab people's attention and that way when like they're scrolling through they don't just see it and go like oh it's another fucking rapper get out of here or whatever you know like before you even fucking start up with it or whatever they they get hooked yeah. in by something other than than the music itself yeah yeah man um how about uh target audience you ever think about a target audience for your music no because it's hard to just target one group of people like yeah. unless you're sponsoring to one group of people you know what i mean well they say that's if like you're going to advertise they say that's what you got to know is your target audience so that you can fucking yeah. set the meta ads you, up or whatever yeah, right? unless you're that's what i mean our audience isn't like when you when you go on distro kit and stuff like that or like any any distribution place you can see where your like fans are yeah but, but how am i supposed to know 
my target audience. It's it's fucking such a wide range. Yeah, for real, man. Um, how about this, man? Do you think there's a best rapper alive, and who is it? Do you, oh God, do you oh, buy God. into that conversation? <laughs> Oh man, I'm gonna just keep my opinion to myself on that one. Okay, all right, but do, I'll so say this though: you think I'll there is one? Though. Yeah, hundred okay. percent, hundred percent. There's people are gonna hate me for this. No artist in in our generation has a better music catalog than Kanye West. In okay. our generation, hundred yeah. percent, he's the greatest. He from front to back. I'm I'm a big fan of that man's music. I'm not gonna lie; I haven't listened to his newest drops uh i think like i listened to one of the vultures albums or something and even that i only listened through like once or whatever but like um yeah man he he's definitely been hugely influential uh through his entire career another another thing that like made me want to sing more with music was 808 and heartbreak yeah. When I heard what he did with Auto Tune, I was like, "Oh fuck, this is this is game over for me." Like for real, people I already forget loved about that man. album, dude. Nobody talks about that album, but it's, he fucking yeah. There it, you go, nice. He he fucking that was an evolution of you know no, stylistically yeah, what, what hip hop is. It yeah, changed the game. My favorite song, my favorite song, Kanye West is "Runaway." I think that's the best. Yeah. That's a classic. Production, yeah. That song is the best production, like produced song. It's it's just everything that you want to hear. Like it, and it'll speaking of music videos, that that fucking music video is a banger too, man. Like that's that's another person that did the the, the music movie. Yeah. He did the where he got the he found the phoenix and and the phoenix was his love and that was runaway was to that the was phoenix, huge man. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I, that was a big part of my life. That album too, my beautiful dark twisted fantasy. That was when I was like actually like making my own music. So like it was like, I'd still put that one up there for like among the greatest hip hop albums. It's it's time. in that conversation. I think it always time. gets ridiculous when you try to say this rapper's yeah. the best or this yeah. album's the best. I mean, I think everybody always runs to Eminem when they say who's the who's the greatest rapper of all time. You know what I mean? I but mean, like, it depends who you're talking to. All the white guys do. Hundred <laughs> percent, man. I went. I lived in London, Ontario. Okay, you know, yeah. everybody wants to be Eminem out there, like. I it's mean, crazy. dude, he's he's had a lot of misses in his career. He had he had some classic albums back in the day, and he got a lot of attention for those albums yeah, and changed, 100%. you know, That's a lot of people's say, opinions on who could be a rapper or whatever. But when it goes catalog, he fell off pretty fucking hard. Wise, like, yeah, uh, there's nobody is touching Kanye West's music catalog, and, it, and that's not politics or whatever fucking abuse he has anymore. This is music we're talking. Yeah. Nobody's touching his music catalog. Well, and dude, I was just thinking about 808s and heartbreaks, I think the real like, shock to the system there was that he wasn't T Pain. Like people were hearing people use auto tune. You know, Future Jay-Z. was probably around at that point using a lot of auto tune. Right? No, but well, no, I don't even think but, Future was around then. Was he not? I don't know. I'd have to look up the years of these was, things. But I was in Future was Future might have been around, but Future wasn't like future he wasn't like he wasn't like, huge like, yeah. you had to be a future fan to know who future was then i didn't know who future was but right yeah like when he because jay-z dropped death of auto tune yeah and then all of a sudden his fucking right hand man is fucking did, abusing did, it did jay drop that before or after 808s and heartbreak i don't know i don't even it, know man yeah but i need to google there, it. there was a lot of sentiment about you know, fuck auto tune and how auto tunes ruining this or auto tunes ruining that. But what I was going to say though, is that like Kanye was somebody who was a rapper, you know, like he was a producer obviously too, but he was, he was an MC who people expected to come out with bars. And he was like, no, fuck it. I'm going to sing with auto tune this entire fucking album. And, and I made feel a like, fucking classic, amazing album that literally like shaped other people man. Well, and it, yeah exactly that's exactly it it shaped the what a rapper is you know rappers yeah. are now allowed to sing you know well, like bef- before that, that you didn't I fucking loved have it. rappers that was the singing you had me, singers honestly, singing exactly. and then you had rappers rapping but like Kanye uh-huh. was like no I'm gonna do both nah, these things yeah. I'm doing this and then all of a sudden go hard all that man honestly that version of Kanye was the best yeah that version of Kanye was the best from there 
I think it was like, this is this man's a, a genius. That's when I realized this guy's a fuck. I actually know. Through the wire, I realized this guy's a fucking yeah, genius. Yeah, I was going to say, he established his genius pretty quickly. He's a genius. Into his catalog, yeah. yeah. Well, like, I, I mean, he was, even when he was just rapping on, you know, the college dropout or whatever, like his debut mm-hmm. album, he, he changed Amazing. shit then, too. Did you you, you did weren't you watch... supposed to be rapping about working yeah. at the Gap when he fucking came out rapping about working at the Gap, right? Like, Did you watch Genius? Yeah, uh, no, on I Netflix? haven't. No, no. Listen, man. Got to check it. I th- you know what? I, I, isn't it several episodes? I feel like I started watching. I think it, it's and like I, three or four. Maybe. Yeah, I think I watched the first one or something. But. I watched it. I watched it, and I had to go back and watch certain things again because listening to his music and you're you're watching the videos. Like yeah. in Jesus Walks, he's talking about like living on like the whatever floor and the view. He's like the view alone will leave your breath. Listen, in the video, in the thing, he's literally talking about this view. Yeah. And you see the view that he's talking about. You see his life, him and his mom. His mom was his biggest fan. Like, yeah. you really see, like, so much. That Watch that shit, man, honestly. Okay. Um, I mean, I guess just here's kind of a general question I can ask off of that. Is, like, can you separate the artist from the art? Are you... <clears throat> 100%. Yeah. I okay. told you, and this is horrible to say, you might not want to air this one on Instagram. Yeah. I, the very first song that I ever sang in front of a crowd was I Believe I Can Fly. Right. So if you ever think yeah. that anywhere, any any day in life that I'm not going to listen to that song, I'm going to stop listening to that song. Like, that's a that's a big song for me. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, no, I, I, I can agree with that, man. I think I think there's, you know, a lot of arguments to be made on both sides of that fence. And, like, some people say, like, oh, you don't want to give these people more money or whatever. But, like... Well, what if I already own the album? <laughs> you know, yeah. Like, yeah. He, he got the money already. You know, you I'm know. not going through all that music to take it off. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, and uh, I mean, when you look back at classics, I don't know if this applies to absolutely everybody, but like, I think most people's classics are from the era when they were in high school, when they were kind of, you know, 100%. discovering themselves and coming 100%. into their own fucking independence or whatever. That's that's the music that everybody looks back at for the rest of their life as like, oh, that was the best era, right? Like, mm-hmm. uh, I think, yeah, that's just kind of a basic thing or whatever. But um, <laughs> if if that was your your classics it's tough to give those up right but when yeah when it comes out 100%. 10 or 15 years later like it seems like dude was trying to get himself canceled like he just fucking wouldn't stop popping no, I'll tell you this. wild shit uh, I'll, when <laughs> when when has kanye ever dropped an album where he didn't do something controversial right before he dropped the album you know what so and I was always, dude, I held on as a fan of Kanye for longer always. than most people did. And I always made the argument like, no, this is him being a smart marketing guy. You know, when the people would be like, guy. oh, he's just he's running around with the Kardashians now. That guy's fucking, you know, no. like even when that was the hate on him, I was still like, no, but, you know, I think he's just doing it because it's fucking smart marketing. He wants to stay mm-hmm. in the headlines, you know, uh, when he popped up, you know, George Bush hates black people like that's smart marketing as he knew you that know that why was everybody's like splash like what did you think when he said all that shit oh fuck kanye's crazy we're never gonna get good music again guess what he drops an album you're listening yeah. you're listening to the album because you want to see if it's good music again and it's fucking amazing music and guess what now everybody's listening to this fucking album for real man yeah okay so dude we've been talking a while i guess uh let's get into this how important section um Mm -hmm. you can answer these as brief or as long-winded as you want to but how important is uh getting grants for a canadian artist it's very important if you can do it if if you can get we were just talking about how how important promotion and everything is yeah and if you can get money to help you do that like you don't need, like I said, most most people will will work with you with your budget. So if you get a grant, make a budget. This right here is for promotion. This right here is for music videos. This right here is for recording. Send and this right here is for paying producers. Pay your fucking producers, yeah, people. Pay your fucking producers, <laughs> yeah. people. You fucking assholes. Yeah. <laughs> for sure, man. Okay. Exactly. Uh, how uh, how important is it that an artist writes their own bars? It's not important. It's nope. not important at all. Because okay. people, people write songs for other people, for other artists when they're just singing on it. So what the fuck's the difference? 
you're still adding your flavor. You still might change a couple words. I've had people come in the studio and be like, yo, maybe you should say this. So what, they wrote my song? No. They, they fucking... I mean, I, I feel like that's a different level of collaboration than like having somebody present you with an entire fucking, here's the reference track, learn how to sing it, and then jump in the booth and sing it. Um, when I was younger, my boy Tyler used to write for me. Okay. I think one song, when he still used to write, he wrote it. Okay. All right. <laughs> I mean, yeah. these are all opinions, man. There's no right or wrong yeah, on this. Yeah, you're yeah. the first one who's told me that. Everybody else I've talked to has been like, oh, man, you're an MC. What the fuck? You got to write your own bars. But okay. <laughs> man, it's different for bars, I guess. Yeah. I mean, it's, I don't know. People write. Yeah. People are better writers than some. So people are better writers than rappers. So why wouldn't you make your talent? It's like somebody writing a, a book and somebody publishing it. You know what I mean? Like, it's still your talent it's still writing what are you gonna do waste all this fucking talent yeah yeah fair enough man um how about how important is a diss track being able to write a good diss uh, track you feel like that's an element of hip-hop that that matters yeah 100 percent. you gotta be able to fucking stand on your own feet you can't be because most time people are rapping fucking that they're this and they're that and they're that and they're this so you gotta be able to stand on it yeah. Someone's talking shit. Look yeah. at fucking what happened with Drake and Kendrick. Like, you know what I mean? Staying on your fucking business. Like, I got one eye I, on Kendrick live on stage right now, and I'm waiting yeah. for him to put Drake on the so, summer so jam screen or whatever the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> you, you never know what's yeah, coming man. up here. Probably, they say the beef is over, time. but uh, we'll yeah. see how over over it is after this. No, but that was sick for the culture, man. That was so hard that they did that. Yeah. Dude, I think it's still ongoing. I mean, they both said that they're done dropping diss tracks, but it's not like they're not going to be. They're never going to be fucking same. Yeah, yeah, they're never going to be the same. Yeah. Um. How about so? Most of the time, I'm talking to MCs, so this is different talking to a guy who produces. But, um, how important is so the? Well, how important is working with one producer to develop a sound for an artist? Very important. Because yep. I can build around you. I can build just just your say you're a singer. I know your your range. I know your key. I know where you can go. I'm not gonna give you a beat that's in fucking B. Right. You can't go up there. You know what I mean? Like that makes sense. Um, do you custom make beats when you like with, with somebody in mind when you're making a beat? Do you often have an artist in mind who Yeah? Who is so, more that way? Yeah. Usually when I'm making a beat, like I used to do tight beats. Right. But then I feel like it's just like, oh, then you're only going to want to hear that person or only oh, going to do that flow on it. And I hate that because that's not what I want. I don't want, I don't want little baby on my beat. You know what I mean? Like I want, I want little baby on my beat, but. <laughs> yeah. If, if it's little you, baby hears this. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The phone call little baby. Yeah. yeah. It's. Yeah, but if it's if it's not Lil Baby, I don't want to hear someone that wants to be sounding like that. So like I'll just put like, oh, whatever, a, a name like this instrumental, like hidden or true or something like that. Like I feel like every different producer has a different like naming their beat strategy. Some guys will just name it like June nineteenth beat or whatever. And some yeah. guys will call and it like what? fucking sunshine or something, you know, like I just give it some random me. name. I'm yeah. Sunshine. Yeah. But I wanted to start doing the dates because then I'd be like, fuck, I, what was that beat called? And I'll have right. to go through so many fucking beats to find it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, a date might be like the easiest to find that way, but uh, it doesn't have as much flavor when you present it on a, a tape to a, to an artist and it's all just like, you know, names or like dates or numbers instead of names sometimes that name can yeah. help a, an yeah. artist kind of like think of what he might say on that beat too right yeah yeah uh how about how important is getting features from big name artists have you ever thought about reaching out to you know some of these mcs uh, who sell verses that already have a big name for themselves yeah, it's good because you also get their motion too. Like you're not just paying for just a verse, you're paying for the name also. Like so when people see that, they're like, oh, that's so and so, like they did this. Yeah. So they're gonna listen. And half the time they're gonna like it because they know that person. Like like we were talking about 
target audience or whatever. Like if they they recognize the name, they're going to go to it. So then that's just a plus plus for you. Yeah, that's one way to target a specific audience for sure. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, how about how important is fashion for an artist? Oh, you got it. You got it. 100%. I know people talk about uh, whatever, whatever, because people used to just go on stage with whatever, but now people people are taking pictures, everything's videoed, everything. I mean, I feel whatever. like in hip hop, fashion's always been it's fairly always been, yeah, important like, and pushed it, it, in 100%. like, you know, punk rock and stuff. People would just yeah. go on stage in their dirty t shirts or whatever, but yeah, yeah. hip hop, yeah, well, yeah. But 100% fashion is is not even just on stage, wherever you go. Yeah. Because, like, you're you're a brand yourself. You don't want to be seen some, somebody all of a sudden. Well, I guess people, like, you see, like, J. Cole and them in, like, fucking flip-flops and baggy fucking Biking whatever, through New but, York looking normal, yeah. Yeah, but it's like, you know that they're in album mode. Then, you well, know he's just I mean? looking that, normal like so that somebody doesn't rob him, probably. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Why are they going to go on the street with all these chains and whatever? We're here. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? But yeah, when people see us, we're making a statement that this is us. So they might be like, oh, who's that? Like, oh, they're fresh. You know what I mean? Who's that? And then now they know who you are. Yeah. So now when they see your name on a flyer, they might want to come to the show. Yeah. For real, man. Um, how about how important is <laughs> making music that fits with current trends? We've kind of been, you know, dancing around this issue the entire time or whatever, just talking um, about tight right now. It's, stuff. it's it's important because a lot of people are going viral with these trends, right? So, like, if you're making something that's like bouncy and catchy, then it might catch like that for you to all of a sudden someone made a little dance to your video and you're viral on TikTok, all right? right. Even the producers just sampling certain stuff like how I was talking about that beat with Lucy like even if I just posted that beat I'm sure somebody will, will dance to it you know what I mean like it's like that like bounce 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 so like yeah it's yeah. it's important okay um, obviously make your own music make do your own thing like you just got to keep that in mind like look at Post Malone he made White Iverson and it was so catchy and so whatever and then he went into like kind of his own genre of music where it's like, well, this is just post Malone. You know what I mean? Like, tiny music support. Well, so earlier you kind of mentioned, like, you know, that like early Kanye is a huge influence and that, like, you're 100%. trying not to listen to new stuff now. So, like, yeah. is there a worry there that, like, when I say you new put stuff, out music I mean, and like, it doesn't hit like that because people are used to hearing trap beats and it's not trap or whatever? Like, oh. No, I don't listen to like the new new stuff. Like I'll listen to like maybe if it's like a known artist that's like okay, that person to me isn't so like fucking crazy. Like I don't listen to none of these new trap star fucking rappers that are just fucking mumbling. Well, I don't want to say mumbling because that's not <laughs> what it is, but you know what I mean? Like yeah. I don't like that stuff. It, it needs to have a melody and harmony, like I said before. Like I like music. I like to hear it. I like to fucking close my eyes. I like to feel it. I like Runaway because every time I listen to that song, I get chills. You just feel that fucking beat. Like, yo, that is like composed perfectly. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I feel like a lot of people would, a lot of, you know, a lot of the like younger guys that I talk to about kind of the new music or whatever, it comes back to like, well, it's about a vibe. You know, it's it's about the feeling yeah. that the music gives you or whatever, yeah. you know, or it's about turning up in the club kind of thing. Like, um, I saw this video of uh, Terrence Howard explaining, like, something about how our body reacts to uh, wave frequencies, like, within, like, music, like, oh, the key of whatever is happiness and stuff like that. Right? I haven't and heard I, Terrence Howard talk about it, but I've heard those theories and how like, you know, hip hop has a low sonic vibration and that's why there's so much negativity in it or yeah, whatever. It's no, something I've seen no. people post and I'm just like, eh. I, I, I agree with it 100% because why do I feel this good listening to certain music? Why does certain music just make me happier? Why would, how would it do that? It's not the, the lyrics, most of the time I'm listening to the beat. You know what I mean? Most of the time I'm I'm focused in on what, what the production is. 
So like, why do I feel this good? It's the only way to explain it. To me, if I'm being honest, man, it always feels like people who start talking about like, oh, the vibrations of the music, like, okay, the mood of the music, I hear you, the like, the feel of the music, the, there's different ways to talk about it. But once we start talking about vibrations, I feel like they're about to pull a crystal out to try to sell to me or something. Yeah, yeah. uh, Like, oh, this will fucking align your vibrations. Like, will it? (laughs) I do like the vibe, like, like, I don't know. I like to feel my speaker when I'm doing the bass. Okay. I'll like just place my hand on the speaker. I don't know what it is. I do it every time and I'll just catch myself doing it. But bass is also my like, like favorite. That's how Helen Keller enjoyed music or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I just put <laughs> like, feel on the speaker. Yeah. I don't know why I do it, but every time I'm making the bass, I'll just be, I just put my hand on the speaker and I'll, that's how I know like I'm in the right key or something. I just feel it. Nice. Okay, well, maybe it's real, man. I don't know. Maybe I just fucking am out of tune with the vibrations yeah. of the world. Uh, <laughs> just, gotta, listen to it. Go. What you're going to do is just go listen to 808 Heartbreak again from front to back. Okay, and then sitting on a speaker feel. or something. Just, yeah, 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 yeah. Just feel the emotion as you go through. <laughs> For real. All right, <laughs> man. Um, how about, uh, well, this is interesting because you moved. So how, how important is an artist's physical location? Um, don't stay home. Don't stay in your hometown because you never get the love that you deserve. Hey. 100%. Okay. Yeah. I. You think it's just, I've heard people say you got to, you know, make it big other places before your hometown will you celebrate home. you, right? 100%. Yeah. I've, I've been there. I, I, I dropped the song, Reppin' the Low, 20,000 20, views, but they don't like acknowledge that. You know what I mean? Yeah. They, they do the award show. They didn't even nominate us for music video of the year. I, we had fucking organic views from the, from the jump plate. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, and then I move out here. Who knows how at, award shows I, criteria works. That's yeah. Like, it's, uh... it's just, it's just weird. Like, and then, I come out here and like look at the love I'm getting from artists out here. When Javier was on here, he shouted me out, and I I just met Javier. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, he's like, good he people. Shouts shouts to hundred percent. Yeah, shout out shout out to Javier, man. Um, I'll <laughs> ask a few more of these. How important, and then we can can wrap this thing up. I I want to see some of this Kendrick Lamar concert. I'm noticing on the wall behind yeah. me though. I should always play a concert on my TV because it's like different colors it's, flashing and shit. It looks yeah, it looks yeah like I yeah. meant to do it this way. Um, how how about this one? How important how important is uh, staying physically fit for an artist? That's not important. Unless you're fucking jumping around on stage and fucking dancing on stage, man. You know, it doesn't matter. Well, uh, always get your, uh, make sure that you're fit enough that you can do your raps without fucking dying. Like, I have right. asthma. Yeah. And I got always going to make sure that I'm fucking getting my bars out. Yeah. Well, and that, I mean, endurance counts a lot too, right? Like, people think physical fitness and they, they instantly go to like weight or yeah. whatever, right? No, and it's no, like, no. yeah, obviously, if you're big pun and you got to ride out on a moped to, to come out on stage, like, you might be a little, yeah. you know, yeah. it might be detrimental to you at that point. But yeah, 100%. But yeah, for the most part, it's I think like breath control and and lung work or whatever. Like, uh, dude, I was I was doing takes walking up a mountain. Fucking, we went out to Waterton a while back, and you know I was trying to record content for this EP that I just dropped yeah. and trying to promote it or whatever. And like, holy fuck, it's it's something else trying to you know acapella spit your bars as you're walking up a hill. Go fucking practice that <laughs> before yeah, you jump 100%. out on stage. Yeah, man. I always practice my shit. You always gotta practice your shit. <clears throat> that even just helps with with your fucking breath control and whatever. Like for real, because there's no punch-ins on on a live set or whatever. Exactly. So just even knowing like but, where but you can get the, that breath. Yeah. That's the importance of a hype man. Right. Okay. You gotta have that guy that knows. Oh, he's gonna miss that word, and he's gonna come in for you. That way, you can just catch your fucking breath real quick and keep it going. So, so, so you'd say a hype man is important then? Hundred percent, busy. Hundred percent. I used to when I was with Reezy, he was my hype man, and I was his. Yeah, yeah. I think that 
that works well if there's two guys who are both artists and they know the other guy's parts and can 100%. back them. Yeah, 100%. yeah, definitely. That's that's the right way to go about having a hype man, I think. Um, this is a new one I've been asking people and getting some interesting answers from. Uh, how important is having the right romantic partner for an artist? Yeah, holy shit, that's deep. Yeah, right? It's very important. That's trying to make motherfuckers important. think when I ask these questions. <laughs> because about, you, know? you gotta be... You're an artist. You're going to be put in certain positions where your partner needs to understand. You know what I mean? You're going to be, you're, you're going to have more fans that are female than are male in, in certain situations. You know what I mean? In most so, situations. I think females are, you know, much more likely to spend money on music and support on, art. Yeah, yeah, even to come to shows. I used to tell my ex, no, no man's going to make me famous. You know what I mean? I'm a singer. Yeah. I sing love songs. What the fuck do you think? Do, do men cry for Chris Brown? No, the females <laughs> are crying for Chris Brown. Like, right. Yeah. No, for so real. Very important because then you're also going to go to shows and be on road, and sometimes they're not going to be there to, to be with you, but they still need to be your fucking rock, your, your, your fucking in your head. You know what I mean? They can't be in your head fucking driving you crazy when you're already going crazy. Yeah. Yeah, that's huge, man. Agreed. Um, okay, last one of these. How important is pressing vinyl in 2024? I want what type to of strobe light shit. Strobe light to go on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know. A lot of people don't. Well, people like collectors. Well, we have record players. You know what I mean? Because we collect vinyl. Like you saw the Alien Heartbreak, but like. I don't know, a lot of people aren't listening to vinyl. That's really just like a, a thing for us because we had that. Well, or even collectors will buy it and then, you know, you end up streaming it rather than, you know, because when yeah. you're at the gym, you just, can't have your fucking vinyl with you. So, yeah. The 808 Heartbreak is not even open. It's sitting on the wall. You know what I mean? I have the album on my phone. They're really collector items like that. Yeah, yeah. 100%. If yeah. you have that big of a fan base where... They will buy them because they they want to collect it, or they want that in their collection. Then yeah, hundred percent. But yeah. it's not as important as like don't waste your money. It's, it's expensive as hell though, too, man. One hundred. I asked somebody just for one. Do you know, Kyo, how much to to just do one record for me? I like my Stoner Simpson album, and it was just I was like, all right. Oh, to do one. Ship it? As far as I've fucking seen man the smallest run you can do is a hundred of them at least anywhere yeah. i could find online and they wanted 3600 and that might have been american too yeah it 3, was 600 for a fucking hundred of them. i know someone in toronto and i think she said it was like three or something like that but she worked there and i was like this is fucking retarded like, what yeah you yeah you gotta be confident you're gonna sell them shits to to invest that type of money yeah. into it yeah because not everybody has a record player. You might be at this point they're gifts for for your family. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, and they're the type of thing that people buy just because they want to support, right? Like, but it's a high price point for the people who just want to support. People will spend twenty bucks on a CD and then maybe never even open it and just go stream it or whatever, right? But eight away in heartbreak is upstairs too. I have the CD too upstairs in the safe, but yeah, for real. Right. I mean, like I bought, you know, at that show that you were at at the Owl, like I bought a Fresh Kills album and it's still sitting yeah. in the shrink wrap. Um, yeah, I think I got you know, a sticker somewhere down here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did, did you stick around to see him, man? I was fucking pissed. Everybody cleared up for just, those guys when I, they got I up on stage. I was just leaving because was there like, was what? drama, and wow. I was like, I'm not sticking around for no drama. So I just got. I heard there was I'm some new. type of fight or something. Out, out yeah, front. yeah. I didn't ever I'm go new. outside, so I fucking missed the entire. I don't thing. know these people. Yeah, I don't know these people like that, so I don't know what these people do. So I'm not sticking around. You know? Fair enough, man. Yeah. Um, how I did see the videos though. Yeah, dude, they're dope as fuck. Uh, actually, yeah. I'm talking to the the guy who was performing with him, King Just. He's my next interview on oh, uh, six. on six. Saturday. Yeah, so so tap in for that if uh, you want to hear me talk to King Just. But I, I barely got a chance to you know say much to him at the show or whatever. We slapped hands and took a picture, and that was about it. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Good dude, it seemed like. But I'm looking forward to talking to him um all right man well I, I appreciate you doing this uh we're at about the hour mark let's let's wrap things up here uh can you describe so, the local scene that you're part of whether you want to talk about the one here in lethbridge or whether you want to talk about where you came <laughs> from it's up to you man 
Uh, the local scene, I'll talk about both. The local scene in London is strong now. Very strong now. They have a good, they have a, like a good base of a good place to go. Like I was talking about jellyfish earlier. Um, the local scene out here is is new to me. So I like it. I like the people that I'm working with. I, I like the, the shows that are being run. Yeah. So that's all I can say. It's all, it's all positive things out here. Yeah, shouts shouts to uh, Donny Sage and Alchemy the Linguist for putting on oh, for show. those shows. Those guys are dangerous. Yeah. I, you know, listen, I need to work with them, man. Honestly, one hundred percent. Even yeah. if I'm just, even if I'm just producing like little clips, like samples for them to to do whatever on, man. Those guys are are dangerous. Though, shout out to them for show. Yeah, hell yeah. Well, and and I was gonna say like it's important that like you mentioned like jellyfish. I, I'm not familiar with that dude, but uh, yeah. it, it's important that each scene has somebody putting on the local shows, right? Like yeah, and, and even just bringing out other indie artists to do shows 100%. like that, right? Yeah, hundred percent that. Um, I talked to those guys June 29th here. So yeah, that should yeah, be a good same. one too. Yeah, <clears throat> catch up with them. Um, can you name some artists that people should be up on uh, just to, to help spread the love? hundred uh, uh, percent. Specifically Casper like Marcus. indie artists. Yeah. 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 Casper Marcus. You got a shout out to young stitch for sure. Go, go check him out. Yeah. Both dope. Uh, those guys Honestly, both got Ollie, bars on bars on bars, man. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Ollie, Javier, shit, Donnie Sage, yes sir. Uh, all the all the people that you hear me with, hundred percent, and obviously myself, Young Prince Beats. But yeah, all right, man. Yeah, what it is. for real. Um, any shows or anything else that we can mention that people should watch out uh, for coming uh, up? Nothing going on, but I'm hearing about some things in the works. So there will be stuff coming out soon. Nice. And Lethbridge. So All right, stay man. tuned. Yeah, uh, I'll definitely uh, keep the people updated on that as as it happens with, uh, you know, after the smoke is clear or whatever. I like to shout out local stuff on there. Um, oh, what's the best way for people to support you or other artists who they like? Um, buy our music. 100%. Yep. Apple Music, whatever, stream it, Spotify, go to bed, play the, play the fucking album on repeat. Shit. Hell yeah. Yep. Whatever you can do. That's a new one, man. Nobody, you know, I've, I've like, I'm familiar with that concept that, that yeah. people can just put on a playlist and go to bed. Uh, and, that helps a lot, man. That that helps a lot. If anybody yeah, wants to, once. there's there's fifty fucking sixty some episodes now, I guess, of Flying yeah. Formation. You can tap yeah. in, just click just that shit, em. leave them on a tab. Listen yeah, to my work, do whatever. Help. It's Help. there for you. Help the cause. Yeah. Um. Okay. Where can people find you on social media most often, man? Where are you most active? Uh, Instagram at YPB14, YouTube, uh, YPB TV. Sometimes I'm on Twitch gaming at YPB. Nice. TV, what you been playing? I think. Uh, right now I'm playing Dragon Quest. Shout out to Alley Cat. She showed me that shit. Um, I'm going to tap yeah. that down. I'll, I'll come through on this. It's Twitch. kind of like Dragon Ball, but I don't know. It's, it's weird. It looks exactly like Dragon Ball, but it's not. Okay. The, kind of a knockoff of it or whatever. Dragon Quest, yeah. it sounds like. Yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah. It's weird. So, um, yeah. Twitch is the shit, man. If you got a setup for it, I think people should be on there. It it annoys me how like standoffish people are as soon as yeah. I'm like, yeah, I do interviews on Twitch and uh, nobody comes through because yeah, sometimes I go live Twitch. and I just make beats like that that 16 bar beat. I made that live on Twitch. I don't nice. know how to save them though. I don't know why they're not they're not staying around, but I'm gonna start recording them on okay. my computer and just posting them after. There's some settings on Twitch or whatever you can go through yeah, and tell yeah, it to, yeah, to either yeah. save them or not. Yeah. Um, but yeah, dude, let me know next time you go live on Twitch to especially work on music. I mean, I, I might just drop oh, through to, to say hi while you're gaming, but uh, never know. I might I might be live tonight, so stay tuned. <laughs> nice, man. Yeah, I think uh, music streams are the wave of the future, man. I've always said, like, um, you know, if I could watch an entire studio session of some of my favorite artists, I would love that. Right? I'd pay for a you subscription know who does that? for it. 
Shout out to Team Pain. Yeah. Team Pain fucking does that shit. Hell yeah, man. Um, and so you know, I set that up over here. I think it sounds like you got that set up over there. You hit a button earlier and showed me your mic booth. Show the show the stream the mic booth, man. Oh, you want to see the booth? Yeah. Here we go. Bam. Yeah. Son. Hold on. That's perfect, man. I mean, I don't know what angle we're looking at. <laughs> but shit, shit works, yeah. Oh yeah, dope, man. Hell yeah, yeah, perfect. Um, yeah, dude, that's that's the wave right there. That's beautiful. Yeah, man. I think uh, the more behind the scenes that people can get, the more they feel like they know the artists, and it's all about making that personal connection with with listeners and stuff too, right? So oh, I think sure, you know, podcasts like this help, but uh, all of it just open the door to the behind the scenes and 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 let the people know you. But thanks, dude. I appreciate you talking to me. Uh, it's yeah, been, man. Of course, it's been nice getting to uh, getting to know you, and um, hopefully we can uh, you know connect out in the in the real world at some point. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, man. You see the studio? You're you're welcome many time man I, I sometimes we throw we throw parties here and hey. actually after the there was a rap battle out here after the rap battle i brought everybody back here and we had a, i have a cypher with everybody nice nice it was man. crazy yeah that that sounds like my type of scene let me know let me know oh for sure man we'll make it happen all right man peace i love the show thanks all right so thanks everybody for hanging out uh it looks like i get to watch the last of this kendrick lamar while he's still on stage it's been fun um you should definitely check out young prince beats coming up like i mentioned june 22nd i'm talking to king just right here live flying formation like always um june 25th talking to imperative he's a producer based out of toronto uh june 29th alchemy the linguist and donnie sage and then i'm done for a month i'm going to continue doing after the smoke is clear mixes through july but there won't be fly in formation um and yeah there's uh it's always oh i guess i should tell you go check out my ep uh it's on dubious.bandcamp.com but uh if you just remember my name d-o-o-b-y-i-s you'll be able to punch that in with the dot com after it dubious.com is the hub for everything that i do you can find after the smoke is clear you can find fly in formation you can find my music over there and uh yeah appreciate y'all thanks for coming through catch you next time